everyone, JT from e Bike Escape here. And in today's video, we're gonna take a look at something you guys out there have all been requesting, another electric trike. So let's get into it. Before we hop in and take a closer look at the Emojo Bison Pro here behind me, we just wanna ask everyone a couple quick favors. If you are looking to purchase any electric trike or electric bike, please consider using the links down in the description. All purchases made after clicking those links help support and keep the lights on here at eBike Escape. Also linked down in the description, we'll have links to our e-bike accessories list, top e-bike brands page, our e-bike discounts codes page, and our newly opened e-bike escape store, where we started to collect a bunch of brands that we use daily here and kind of put them all in one nice, easy to find location for you guys. So with all of that out of the way, let's take a closer look at the Emojo Bison Pro. So before we talk about this trike in particular, let's talk about Emojo. Emojo is a brand that we decided to take a look at as they are another electric trike manufacturer and with some other trikes coming out on the market recently, we kind of wanted to have a better sample size so we can make better recommendations for people out there as well as you guys, the viewers have been requesting us to kind of look at some other electric trikes and the Emojo Bison Pro is just one of a couple that we're gonna be looking at outside of, of course, some of the other offerings from some of the bigger brands that we know. Now, Mojo is not a new brand to the market. Mojo has been around for quite some time. They have four electric trikes offered on their website, as well as a slew of other electric bikes. The Bison Pro is the top electric trike that they offer. So we kind of wanted to see what does the best of the best offer for your money if you're looking for a trike. So with that said, let's talk about price. The Emojo Bison Pro comes in at $32.99. However, at time of filming, it was being offered at $29.99. The Emojo Bison Pro comes in three different color options. You have this red in front of you, which is a really beautiful red. I don't know if you'll be able to see the sun reflecting off it. It's a really nice shiny red, but it also comes in a green and white. It has a rider capacity of 300 pounds with a rear basket capacity of 100 pounds and a front basket capacity of 25 pounds. I say that to tell you that the total capacity for the strike is 425 pounds. They do recommend that that is evenly distributed across the trike. So they recommend having a rider capacity of 300 pounds. And the height range for the trike is Anyone above four feet, which is an interesting way for them to say that because you really don't have to balance on a trike anymore as you can just simply sit on the seat and you don't really need to put your feet down. So what they recommend is anybody above four feet tall should be able to fit on this trike as that's how low the seat goes to still be able to reach the pedals. The total weight of this trike is something that needs to be considered as well as the trike being that it is a dual battery fat tire e-bike. It comes in at 123 pounds with the batteries. So that is a very heavy trike. It's not gonna be something you're gonna be lifting in and out very easily or by yourself most likely. But just note too that the rear wheel width does fit through your standard door. So that was nice to see that that was something that they did think about when they designed this trike. Before we get into anything else about this trike as well, I do wanna rehash that trikes are tended to be geared as a mobility or accessibility device for certain people that don't have full access to motion or good balance. So that is the way that this trike was designed with a senior or a accessibility need in mind. And one more quick note before we take a look at all of the components on the Emojo Bison Pro here, it has gotta be the assembly. So the Emojo Bison Pro came shipped to us in three boxes. It was very well packed. I had no damage, no scratches, anything like that. We'll go ahead and put some pictures on the screen now of kind of what it looked like as I was assembling it and as I went. But with that said, if you are not mechanically inclined or you don't wanna undertake a little bit of a project, whether you're not capable or whatever. Emojo has a couple options for you. One, you could ship it to a bike shop and have them assemble it. That rate is gonna vary based upon where you're located. And then the other option is that Emojo offers a $200 expert assembly fee. So the Emojo Bison Pro or any of the Emojo trikes would show up to your doorstep fully assembled for $200. That might be cheaper than what you're able to find in your local area. But also wanna call out that the assembly instructions that come with the Bison Pro were very nice and very detailed. So it does give me a bit of hope that if you are slightly mechanically inclined and want a little bit of a project, you will be able to do it. But they do offer that $200 expert assembly fee if you, that is not something you are capable of doing. Well, with all of that out of the way, let's take a closer look. Let's go ahead and turn this so we can see it a little better. So starting up here in the front, there's a lot going on up here as this is a front motor e-trike. These are Kenda 24 by four inch fat tires. They have a little bit of a grippy tread here. So if you're on maybe some crushed gravel pass or whatever, these will be completely capable. And that is both front and rear. The rear tires are a different size. They are Kendas as well, but they are 20 by four inch Kenda tires. Again, same matching tread as the front. So they will have quite a bit of grip on some 
off-road style terrain. And being that this is a trike, we do recommend that you ride this on flat terrain as trikes tend to have slightly different handling characteristics. So just keep that in mind if you are gonna be riding on uneven terrain, sidewalks, crushed gravel paths or whatever that happen to have some slant to them. And then you also notice up here, we have a Zoom hydraulic disc brake. This does have hydraulic disc brakes front and rear. These are paired to a 160 millimeter front rotor. And then you'll notice that we have a Bafang motor. This is a 750 watt Bafang motor that's peaking somewhere between 900 and 1000 watts. So it's a very capable motor. With that being a motor up here, you will notice that it is bolted on. You will not be able to quickly remove the front axle if you say needed to. And then also notice that they do have these slight small torque arms here. These should help the nuts from coming undone from the torque of that front motor. And then you'll also notice up here, we have a hydraulic disc fork. Now this fork does not have a lockout or adjustment knob on either side. So it is just a standard fork. So you will not be able to adjust it to your weight, but it is still a suspension fork nonetheless. So it will be able to soak up some of those bumps. Let me go and throw you on a tripod and give you an idea of what it's capable of. All right, so yeah, give it some pushes here. Yeah, it definitely has some compliance in it. It's definitely a spring front fork. It's gonna be better than any rigid fork, but along with those fat tires and that suspension front fork, it should be able to soak up and make your ride that much more comfortable. And then coming over here to the other side, you'll notice that this is still a bolt, a torque arm, and this is where the wire comes out. It comes out from between the fork arm and the motor, runs up the fork here, and then disappears into the down tube. And here's a look at that headlight. So I mounted it to the basket as there was this tab, but if on the basket, this is a stationary mount. If you wanted the headlight to actually move with you while you were turning, you can mount it down here on the front of the fork here. There is plenty of room with this bolt and that would allow the, like I said, the light to kind of turn with you. This is a pretty nice LED front headlight. Go ahead and turn that on, see if we can, we should be able to see it a little bit here in the daylight. There we go, got that headlight turned on for you. So this is a pretty decent LED light, but nonetheless, it is still a stationary LED light. We always recommend for best visibility to have a flashing uh, handlebar mounted light or a headlight that flashes. That way you have better be seen visibility as headlights typically on e-bikes provide good seeing visibility, but not at the best to other motors on the road. While we're talking about the headlight, we have to talk about this front basket. It's a fairly nice wooden bottom basket mounts to the head tube here with these four bolts. This has a 25 pound capacity, which is pretty decent for say running errands and picking up some groceries. Nicely branded here on the front, the mojo and as well as the wood. And then coming around here, here's a look at the stem and handlebars. These are pretty swept back handlebars, as well as this is an adjustable stem. So you should be able to adjust the cockpit nicely to fit you. You simply have this lever here. You can actually quick adjust the angle of them, as well as if you simply loosen this bolt here, you can actually adjust the height of them and be able to pull them in and out for you as well. So it really adds to some of the accessibility that this bike is aimed at as that adjustability in the cockpit to fit almost any size rider. And these nice swept back handlebars, here's a better look at them and how the cockpit is kind of orientated. And again, you'll be able to twist them to really adjust that cockpit, as well as be able to put you in a very upright riding position if you needed to. Take some of that pressure off of your wrists. Coming over here to the side, you'll notice we have Zoom hydraulic disc brakes. These are the matching levers for those. These are faux leather grips, but if you notice here, this is a little Allen screw that is hidden here. These are locking leather grips. Here is the simple three button control for the display, which we'll go into a little bit more in a minute. And on the right hand side here, you notice we have a SIST seven speed thumb shifter. Yes, this is a seven speed electric trike. We'll give you a close look or as best we can. That derailleur is tucked pretty nicely under the rear axle. And then you will notice this thumb shifter here. Now it is nice to see a thumb shifter, especially on a bike that's aimed at accessibility as twist grip throttles can accidentally be twisted if the bike is on. This provides a little bit extra security so that that doesn't happen, no accidents per se. A matching locking faux leather grip on the side here. And then up here, you'll notice a zoom hydraulic disc brake lever as well. And then I don't know if you'll be able to see it. There's this little nub right here. And what that nub is, if you simply depress and push, that is actually the e-brake. So in order to activate it, you will pull down the lever pretty close, and then you'll put your finger over and push that down in a lock, and now you'll notice the lever is locked. So what that does is it actually locks the rear hydraulic disc brakes so the bike cannot be moved. Really nice to see for getting on and off, be able to lock that so you don't have to worry about the bike, say, rolling away or moving on you. And both hydraulic levers do have motor cutoffs. And while we're talking about wiring, the wires are fairly nicely wrapped here, not all the way up as we've seen. And they're wrapped a little bit going down to the down tube where they split. These are not internally routed cables. They actually route on the outside. So not the cleanest look we've ever seen, but if you ever have to do any maintenance, you'll be very happy that the wires are routed on the outside. 
All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the display. You notice over here, like I said before, we have these very basic three button display, makes it easy to operate. And you'll also notice we are in direct sunlight and this is a LCD monochrome display much easier to see in direct sunlight. There is a brightness control that you can turn up and down, but this is a good look at the display in direct sunlight. You can see it very nicely. So starting in the upper left, you notice we have our battery percentage. They are in bars and it goes from E to full. In the upper right hand corner, you notice we have an odometer and that is in miles. You push the button again and that switches to trip. And then front and center, we have our speed. Then we have our mode. And so what that is, is in pedal assist level one, which you can see in the bottom left hand corner, mode one is listed as eco. Mode two and three are listed as standard and pedal assist level four and five are listed as power. And again, this is zero to five, zero. You do also have access to the throttle, but the pedal assist is turned off. And you'll notice there in the bottom right, that is a watts meter. So it'll tell you how many watts the motor is pulling. Just kind of a nice feature that we've seen. You can kind of keep track of how much power you're pulling out of the bike. If you're ever trying to say hyper mile your bike, that's a good easy way. You just watch that meter and try and keep those watts as low as possible. And then one thing I did notice too, if you have the e-brake engaged over here on the right and you have the bike off and you go and turn the bike on, you'll notice that down here at the bottom where the watt meter was, it shows an error and gives you a code. Don't worry about that. Simply just deactivate the e-brake or the parking brake per se, which, and that code will go away. Something I noticed while setting this up that I was a little worried about, but not something you need to worry about just, and then if you activate the parking brake while the bike is already on, it does not give you that same air. All right, and very quickly, we're gonna go ahead and run through the advanced settings. So the advanced settings on this bike are pretty easy, but there are a lot of them in there that you can mess with. So what I would recommend is referencing your owner's manual. You notice here you have the setting side inside of your actual owner's manual where it lists out what they are. Here's a little bit of an overshot for you, but I'll go ahead and run through. There are some in there that you can make the bike inoperable if you adjust, so be very careful if you do go in here. And there are also a lot more settings than listed in the manual there. So to get into the advanced settings, you push the up and down button at the same time, the display will change. And then here we go, we're gonna go ahead and start down at P001, or P01, I'm sorry. So P01, this is your display brightness. We have it turned all the way up to three, it is one, two, three. You adjust it by simply pushing up and down on the arrows. And then P02, this is your units of measure. You have miles per hour or kilometers an hour. P03 is the voltage of the bike. We're gonna go ahead and leave that at 48. But again, that's one of those settings you could adjust and really mess with your bike. P04 is your hibernation time. So if you want the bike to stay on, you know, for two minutes after you stop riding or whatever, you can adjust that. It comes factory set to five minutes. You can turn that all the way up to a much higher length of time. P05, this is the amount of levels of pedal assist. So you have zero to three or zero to five. We're gonna go ahead and leave that at five. P06 is the wheel size. This is set to 24 inch from the factory. P07 is the number of magnets on your actual sensor. Again, one of the settings we don't recommend you mess with. And then here you have P08, this is your speed limit. So if you wanted to say turn the speed limit of the bike down to maybe a walking speed, 14 miles an hour, you can go ahead and do that. The bike does come shipped as a class two e-bike, as you see here on the sticker, which means that it has a 750 watt motor limited to 48 volt, And that means that it will also have a limited top speed of 20 miles per hour, whether you are on throttle or pedaling. So we're gonna go ahead and turn that down to 20. And then, like I said, there are a lot more settings in here, P09, it goes all the way up to P19. So I'm not gonna go through all of the settings. If you are interested in some of those, there are some references out there on the website that you can check, but we do not recommend messing with those besides those couple that we showed you there. And then to get out of the advanced settings, simply push the up and down arrows and that will lock your settings in and now you're back to the main display. Moving down from the cockpit, as I kind of mentioned before, the wires are externally ran. They do not run inside the down tube. Here's some of that Emojo branding on the down tube. Here's a sticker here that talks about the 300 pound capacity of the bike. Here's the look at the folding mechanism. I'm going and give you a close up look of the latch. So here's a little close up look of the latch. You simply push up on this. You will need to lift up on this mechanism to be able to separate the frame as it is still locked right now. But when you pick up on this, there's a pin that removes and now you can uh, twist the frame around. I'll go ahead and show you how this folds towards the end of the walk around and then to lock it it's kind of like a seat clamp you simply get it twisted and then you push down and it will lock into place down here on the bottom here we have a stand that number one protects the wires but two when the bike is folded it'll actually sit on this so don't have to worry about crushing the chain ring on the other side we have a pro wheel crank arm as well as a metal pedal now these are not folding pedals so if you say you're going to be 
folding this bike quite frequently, we'd recommend getting some folding pedals. Check out our accessories list as there's also some quick release pedals we have on there that might be nice to you to have if you're gonna be folding this bike a lot. Here's a close look at the controller housing. You see you have all the wires that run nicely under the frame and go up into this box. And then here you have the two wires that go to the rear mounted batteries here. There's two of them, as I said. Here's a look at some of the branding on the rear chain stay, electric assisted, designed in California. I'm gonna go around to the other side to give you a better look, but here's a quick look at the rear axle. Here is that 20 by four inch Kenda tire on the side and then tucked back there nicely, we have one of the two Zoom hydraulic disc brakes. Yes, both wheels have Zoom hydraulic disc brakes. They run off of a single lever up in the cockpit. Here's a look at this fender up here. It doesn't provide too much coverage, but again, it will provide some splash protection. And then coming around to the back here, here's a look at the two batteries. Again, I will pull both those out here in a minute. Here's a look at the rear brake light. And then tucked under there, here's a look at the Shimano Turney rear derailleur. And then above the derailleur there, here's a look at the 14 to 28 tooth rear freewheel. And being that this is a freewheel and when you are pedaling, there is no differential in the back here. So what happens is that all of that power that you're pedaling will go to this right rear wheel and that'll actually be what moves with you pedaling. And then that left wheel is going to be free spinning until you hit those brakes, of course. But that is how they get past needing a differential. And then the motor, like we said, is in the front. And then here's a look at the zoom hydraulic disc brake on the right rear wheel as well. So you do have dual hydraulic rear brakes. Very cool to see. And then coming around the side here, we have this nice long chain that connects all the way to this double-sided plastic chain guarded 44 tooth front chain ring, and then a matching pro wheel crank arm on this side and matching Welgo metal pedal. Here's a look at this pretty robust rear basket. It has some nice Emojo branding there in the center. Nice thick wooden bottom. This rear basket does have a weight capacity of 100 pounds. Very, very heavy duty there, so you'll be able to carry quite a bit. Along with that, Emojo actually has some pretty cool accessories. One of the ones that I liked the most, kind of fits maybe some of the de larger demographic that this bike is aimed at, is they have a golf bag mount that actually mounts in the rear basket, so you can put your golf bag in it and maybe use this to, say, get around a golf course or something like that. Kind of just an interesting accessory we haven't seen from a lot of other people out on the market. Now quickly, before I pull those two batteries out, I realized I forgot to mention the most important part of the bike, the seat. This is a comfort saddle, which means that it has a backrest and a small horn front seat. So you'll be able to pedal a little bit, but it'll be more like kind of like a chair. There is some adjustment down here, so you can slide it forward and back. And then as well as on the back of the backrest here, you can adjust this up and down very easily. So you can really adjust the seat in a cockpit to fit you. And while I mentioned before, the low ability of the seat, the seat can go all the way down. And there's a look at your extension you would need, as well as it can go pretty high up. So that if you were a taller rider, you should be able to adjust this cockpit to fit you nicely. Let me go and put you guys back on the tripod and pull those batteries out. So as I said before in this review, there are two batteries on this e-bike and there are two sets of keys to go along with those two batteries. On the actual keys themselves are the number for the lock. What I recommend is just make sure that you know which lock is on which side, maybe put a tag on their respective key. But the reason I mention that is because the locks are actually all the way up here on the front of the batteries. So in order to get the batteries out, you do have to kind of reach around. You may not be able to see all the time. So marking the keys ahead of time is just kind of a little cheat way to quickly be able to get your batteries in or out. Let me go ahead and pull one out for you. Both batteries are the same. We'll go ahead and pull out this right battery. So in order to get the battery out, what you're gonna do is put the keys in and then you're gonna twist the keys all the way to the left and that'll drop the pin and then you can simply pull the battery out the back. So here's a look at the battery removed. On the top here, you notice we have a five LED display to tell you the battery percentage. On the right side here, we have a charging port. On the subject of charging, the Emojo trike does come with one charger. So one charger to be able to charge up both batteries. On the bottom here, there is a power button. Make sure that that is turned on on both batteries. In order to turn it on, you actually push it down and it'll click and stay locked in the up position. And then down here, on the bottom, here are the specs. It is a 48 volt, 11.6 amp hour battery that is a 556.8 watt hour battery. And so between the two batteries, you'll have 23.2 amp hours of total range. It's a pretty decent range. And what they claim with the bike being this weight and the rider on it, you'll be able to get somewhere in the range of about 45 miles. Now that is also gonna be assuming that you are able to pedal. And on the side of the battery here, we have a Mojo Energy Cell. Now again, both batteries are exactly the same and they can be put in either slot. The lock is actually keyed to being actually on the tray. In order to slide it on, you notice you have these two tracks here and they actually slide in. You simply set the battery down and slide it in. So you get the battery in, you get it about all the way and then give it a little push. 
that'll click it in and then reach around. This is the easiest way I've found to get to the keys is to reach into the front of the basket. And then to lock, you simply twist the key all the way to the back of the bike and give it a test pull. And the locks operate the same on both sides. You only need the keys to get the batteries in and out. And the batteries can also be charged on or off the bike. All right, now that you know how to pull the batteries out, let's go ahead and show you what this bike looks like folded. I decided to come around to the concrete over here as it's a little, gonna be a little bit easier to fold and unfold the trike here in front of you guys. So in order to fold the trike, there is only the single fold point in the middle of the bike like I showed you before. You could also adjust the handlebars down a little bit. This is not gonna fold up as small as some of the other trikes we've seen, but it is still gonna have some folding capability. So if you needed to maybe store it in the corner of an apartment or a garage or something like that, it will have some ability to be folded. Again, remember this bike does weigh 123 pounds with the batteries. So if you're maybe trying to lighten it up a little bit, you could also remove the rear batteries, but it is still gonna be a about a hundred plus pound bike. So what I like to do is drop the seat all the way down lock that in place. I undid the lever on the side. Remember you have to undo that little knob and then simply lift up and that will free the pin. And now you can, like we've seen on other bikes, simply twist the wheel around and you should be able to swing this front wheel. And there is about what it's gonna look like. You can get a little bit more range out here. It's gonna sit on that little kickstand like I showed you down there but that is about as much movement as you're gonna have in the front wheel. It gives you, like I said, not a whole lot of shrunk down, but it does give you a little bit smaller of a footprint. It's not as, obviously not quite as long. We're gonna put the dimensions for the Mojo Trike folded and unfolded on the screen now for you. So if you have a desired place in mind, you can kind of measure it out. That is gonna be length, width, and height. As the height from this bike does go down a little bit, if you say maybe took the handlebars off or whatever. And also if you remove this front basket, the measurements I provided with you is gonna be forward the basket on. If you need maybe a little bit extra clearance, you could pull that basket off to get a couple more inches. So here's a look at the Mojo Bison Pro folded. And that pretty much wraps up the walk around portion of the Mojo Bison Pro. I'm gonna go ahead and throw it to myself in a neighborhood where I'll show you how the Bison Pro pedals. And then we will also take it up our hill climb test so you can see what this front Bafang motor is capable of. All right, here we are at the riding portion of the Mojo Bison Pro electric trike. Before we get into it, two quick things. One, I do want to remind everyone, riding a trike, it feels a little weird the first time you do. Um, it has some interesting handling characteristics. Um, with this bike having fat tires and a front suspension, it's kind of meant to handle off-road, but being that it's a trike, you have to like counterbalance. I'll do my best to explain that. There's a couple off-canter places here along the road and also a little bit of a off-road path. I'll kind of show you what this bike is, trike is capable of on that path. The other thing that we have to talk about, when we receive the Emojo trike, some of doing, doing some of my riding beforehand, the Emojo Bison Pro was not as powerful as I was expecting to be with that front motor. We contacted Emojo about this and they told us that that was basically due to tuning. They did that on purpose. And so let me explain. When I took the trike out, I went to go up my driveway hill and I also took it up our hill climb test and it was not able to make it up there. What happened was it would, watching the watt meter, it would go up the hill and then you just steadily watch the wattage drop. What Emojo told us is that that was due to tuning, not drastically, that has a torque limit set. And then once the bike peaks to that torque number, it'll actually back down the amount of available torque in an effort to make the bike more approachable and not overpower you of saying the bike trike is trying to get away from you. Really, the trike is geared towards a more of a senior or accessibility level audience. So they're trying to make it so the trike will not get you into a situation that you may not be able to handle. However, when we reached out to a mojo and told him this, we asked him, hey, what's going on? Is this meant to happen? They told us that that was done on purpose and they offer a more powerful controller and tuning if a customer asks for it. You can ask for that controller and it's a very easy swap. I will put on the screen now, I reached out and asked them if you could request that at time of assembly so that you didn't have to worry about that installing that yourself. I'll let you know what they say in text on the screen now. But all of the riding and our hill climb footage from this point forward will be done with that upgraded controller. Reason being, we like to show what these bikes are capable of via motor, tuning, stuff like that. However, that stock controller, as we'll play now for you, was not able to make it up our hill climb test and it didn't make it very far up our hill climb test, either pedaling or on power uh, throttle alone. So we didn't think that it was worth showing that as it kind of didn't make the trike look like it was capable, but this is a capable trike. However, riding the trike around on the old controller on flat ground neighborhood road like this, the trike was fine. It was capable of getting around. It seemed very accessible. 
It had still would peak up to some high wattage to be able to get you over some small hills. However, for a long gradual hill climb or something of that nature, we do recommend you upgrade the controller. Or if you're somebody that's maybe using this for a little bit more commuting in a hillier area, the upgraded controller is gonna be the best option for you. And again, all of the riding footage will be done with the upgraded controller as we just felt that it fit our terrain better. And it is nice that you can reach out to a Mojo and they have an option for you if you run into a problem where you're like, hey, this trike is not fitting, what are you they have a solution, don't worry, reach out to them, they can upgrade the controller for you for free. It was a very easy swap, very easy email back and forth, and it was mailed to me very quickly. All right, with all of that housekeeping stuff out of the way, let's go ahead and jump into the first person riding footage. To start out, we have our GPS app over here. This is just a speedometer app uh, via the app store. We have our trusty bike case phone mount here. It's a very nice mount. Um, we sell it in our e-bike escape store. And we recommend it. I have yet to lose a phone. Um, this will be the first review I've lost a phone. If it does fall out, you will be, it'll be caught on camera for you all to see. So for the riding footage, I'm gonna start out in pedal assist level one, and I'm also gonna start out in the easiest gear here and just kind of work my way through pedaling and talking. And then I will go through and talk about what the throttle is capable of. And then after I've gone through the pedal assist and the throttle, I'll actually go and find some little bit off-road, show you what these fat tires and suspension fork are capable of and tell you what you need to be cautious of if you, that is the type of environment that you're planning to ride a trike in. So to start out, we're gonna go ahead and give myself a little bit of throttle to get off the line here get pedaling here and let me go ahead and downshift all the way to the easiest gear. So pedal assist level one, it's nice that you have that watt meter that you can reference. And we're getting about 500, yeah, about 500 watts is what I saw there. And we, I am completely ghost pedaling. So I'm gonna shift up to two. There we go, still feel like I'm ghost pedaling a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and shift up. It looks like we're at 12, 13 miles an hour. Go ahead and shift up again, 13 miles an hour. Yeah, still 12, 30, and I still feel like I'm ghost pedaling. Okay, here we go fourth or fifth on the shift, I'm in fifth on the shifter now, and I just now feel like I'm providing some of my own power. So pretty easy cadence here, but I'm going to be yeah, somewhere between 13, 12, 13 miles an hour here. There we go, that feels, this is a pretty comfortable cadence, and that's in pedal assist level one. So let's go ahead and crank it up to pedal assist level two. Felt the power kick on there immediately, and we are now, third. I mean, I'm ghost pedaling immediately again, so I'm gonna shift up to sixth here. Again, we have this nice upright riding position here and an adjustable stem if you wanted to. Maybe give yourself a little bit more of a, up, even more upright riding of a position. Here we go, a little bit of a turn. And this is that trike at about 16. You, I, I, you gotta let off the power there because with the turns, you kind of have to lean in to counterweight that inner wheel wanting to come off the ground. So like I said, doing about 17. There we go, shift up to seventh on the shifter. I am now in the highest gear on the shifter in pedal assist level two, doing about 15, 16 miles an hour. It's a very, Pretty powerful trike. Um, I'm just not ghost pedaling. I, yeah, I'm kind of ghost pedaling. I'm on the verge of it right now. And again, uh, this is only pedal assist level two. Let's go ahead and kick it up pedal assist level three. Again, more power immediately. Now that I'm riding, this bike is gonna probably be capable, or the strike is gonna be capable of doing speeds of 20 miles an hour easily. I'm gonna have to slow down coming around some of these turns with being that I am on a trike. So yeah, here we go. The pedal assist level three. Again, almost ghost pedaling at this point and doing 18, 17, 18 miles an hour. Shift up pedal assist level four. Again, more power immediately. I see 999 on the watt meter there. Completely off the power here for this turn. And I'm counterbalancing. You'll be able to tell by the camera moving. And yeah, we're 999 watts right now. We are getting output and we are, I mean, I'm completely ghost pedaling. I'm gonna have to slow down here. It's a little bit of a straight here. Let's see. We'll just see what we can get the trike up to pedaling in pedal assist level four. And maybe we'll kick up to five once we get, get around here. So, all right, here we go. Full power it's giving me, still 999 watts, 16, 17, 19, 20 miles an hour, 21. Woo. Yeah, 22, it's a little fast for my liking on a trike, but go ahead and kick up pedal assist level five. There you go, I felt even more power. Oh yeah, 23, 24. So this, this controller and the way this trike is set up is set up just like an e-bike. So some of the other trikes we've reviewed are limited to be more approachable and they have a decent amount of torque but their top speeds are limited to for that 14 miles an hour. And that's so that they are approachable for all audiences. Um, this trike, however, with the upgraded controller is not capped. Again, I also have it unlocked. You can, you can lock it down in the advanced settings if you wanted to. There we go. I'm, I'm having to slow down to get around some of these turns. I, we, you know, we, we get comments very frequently from people that uh, are telling us that, you know, a trike shouldn't be limited or they want a trike can't believe it only, uh, you know, some other trikes you reviewed only go 14 miles an hour. 
trying to go around a turn on a trike going 18, you know, if you were on, say, a sidewalk, something like that, trying to take some of these turns uh, on a trike, the, it's a little off-putting with the feeling of it, but it's, it's completely normal for a trike to feel like that. So, all right, now that we are here, I'm gonna go ahead and just do throttle power alone. So I'm just hitting the throttle. I'm in pedal assist level five. And throttle is not tied to a pedal assist level. So if you hit the throttle, you're getting full power regardless of what gear you're in. And again, 24, this thing, 25, 26, 27 miles an hour. I'm gonna have to slow down for this turn. So I, uh, this bike is gonna hit 28 probably pretty easily or whatever that top speed is. That's impressive for this motor being on a bike that weighs two batteries that weighs 123 pounds with even with me a hundred uh, 225 pound rider so yeah this bike this trike is very capable that front motor that front controller this is kind of a, a different animal per se than some of the other trikes uh, we've ridden so with that out of the way though the, the motor is capable we're gonna throw it to our hill climb test and show you what this is capable of here we are at our hill climb test the way this test will go the first time I go up I'm gonna go up on throttle alone then I will turn around, come back down, and I will go up via pedal assist. And then after this, we will give you our concluding thoughts about the uh, Mojo Bison Pro, let you know if you think it's a worthy trike for you to consider purchasing. Like I said before, this is our bike case phone mount and GPS speedometer phone app. We'll put links to these in the description or check our eBike Escape store. We'll put the specs for the hill on the screen now. With this upgraded controller, I really have, after that riding footage, I have very limited concern that this bike is not going to make it up the hill uh, at a decent speed. Remember, I am a 225 pound rider and this hill is listed at about a 7.2% grade, but the bike also weighs somewhere in the 120 pound range with the robust frame and dual rear batteries. So let's see what it's capable of. So right now we're dropping about 18 to 20, depending on which, we're gonna reference the GPS as I think the speed on the actual display is reading a little bit lower. There we go. 20s right now, 19, 20. The hill's really starting now. So we'll see if it makes it up. But again, this is throttle alone. I'm providing no power. If the bike stops, it stops. And the old controller, it barely made it to about this point before the power had completely cut because of that torque limit. But this controller, as you can see, is taking us up no problem. The wattage down here has been pegged at 999. So meaning that it's putting out, I'm assuming close to a thousand watts, which it probably feels like it is. There we go, eight, nine miles an hour. Again, it's not going up the fastest we've ever seen, but given that it has an extra wheel and uh, probably about an extra, I don't know, 40-ish pounds on most bikes. That's pretty good. So there we go, six, seven. Still doesn't feel like it's gonna stop though. Five. So if you have a very steep hill in your area, the trike is going to make it up it. It's not gonna be the fastest thing, but if you're picking this up for a mobility tool or because you don't have as good a balance, this is uh, it's gonna make it. There we go. Now the hill kind of tapers off here and the bike speed should start to pick back up gradually. There we go, now we're speeding back up. Yeah, so it made it up that hill. Obviously, a little bit of slow down there coming up it, but that's what would be expected. So, all right, I'm gonna go ahead and loop on my way back down, test out the brakes. I'll give you how I felt about those at the bottom. They are hydraulic, and then I will come back up while pedaling. All right, here we are back down at the bottom. If you look here, the maximum speed is now 29 miles an hour. I hit a speed of 29 miles an hour coming down the hill and was able to use these brakes to slow down very nicely. These are Zoom hydraulic disc brakes with a parking brake on the right quick refresher there. And we do have those two hydraulic rear calibers. So even though we have that extra weight of, like I said, about 40 pounds, you have an entire extra caliper to help you slow this bike down. Very nice to see, big nod to safety, no problems from this bike slowing me down. All right, so now we're gonna go up the hill while pedaling, give myself just a little throttle to start out here. And I am in pedal assist level one and one on the shifter. I'm gonna find myself ghost pedaling extremely quickly as first gear, we found it didn't start stop ghost pedaling until somewhere in fourth on the shifter here. So there we go, about 13, 12, 13 miles an hour, but actually fifth on the shifter here is probably pretty ideal. Cause again, we're going, you know, somewhere between 12 to 14. So it's a little bit of a downhill. And then right at these yellow signs is where the, uh, the bridge here is right where the uphill starts. So I'm gonna stay in pedal level one until there and just see how this feels. Here we go. So I am, yeah, providing a little bit of my own effort here, just trying to keep a nice easy cadence. I'm gonna try and keep the same cadence all the way up. And you see the speed dropping a little bit, I would probably shift down to fourth here. And this is pretty comfortable for getting up here. Now this isn't the steepest part of the hill, 
but Pegasus level one is not really meant for that. So let's go ahead and shift up. Pegasus level two, immediate motor, power kick up. Go ahead and shift up to five, up to six. There we go. Maybe, honestly, maybe even seventh here on the shifter. I mean, the power this bike is putting out in two is pretty, pretty impressive. So the steepest part of the hill starts is starting to come up here. Go ahead and shift into Pegasus level three here. There we go. Find myself, yeah, ghost pedaling at this point. 16, 17 miles an hour here. There we go, now the hill's really starting. Okay, here I'm having to put it, I would probably downshift to six comfortably. Go ahead and shift up to Pegasus level four. I'll shift down to fifth on the shifter. And yeah, 11 here, I'm trying to, as I said, keeping that nice easy cadence, but I am providing some of my own power. Probably shift down again to fourth. Let's go ahead and shift up pedal Pegasus level five here. It does seem like we are getting the maximum. Nope, I did feel it actually eased up a little bit there. So I did get a little bit more power. This seat is not the best for pedaling, especially when you're putting in torque because it's not meant for that. It's a comfort seat. But I would shift down to third here. Yeah, seven, eight miles an hour. Our max, our, our lowest speed on throttle alone was somewhere in the four, I believe, four to five mile an hour range. And there the minimum was seven to eight. So quite a bit faster when you can provide your own power. And then once you get to the top of the hill, I think, uh, you just kind of lean back on that comfort seat and enjoy. Maybe even give yourself some throttle and have it take over. So no problem with that new controller. All right, that pretty much wraps up the hill climb and all of the riding parts for the Emojo Bison Pro. Let me go ahead and throw it to myself and some third person riding footage and I'll give you my concluding thoughts on the Emojo Bison Pro. There we have it folks, a no holds bar electric trike that has many of the features you all have been asking for in the comments. The Emojo Bison Pro is a high spec trike that comes in at a whopping $29.99, but Emojo does have some other offerings starting at around $25.99. The Emojo Bison Pro is a trike that takes some of the key specs we like in e-bikes and applies them to a trike frame. Some are executed very well, while in my opinion, others could use a bit of refinement to help them stand out. With some of the more budget trikes that have been coming to the market, Emojo has a trike with it with those few improvements could become a top tier trike. Let's talk about some of the things that help the Bison Pro stand out to me. First has to be the fat tires. They're a crowd favorite on e-bikes and for good reason. Fat tires tend to sport more aggressive tread patterns and sport a more aggressive appearance while being a little bit larger to help provide some comfort and cushion when running lower pressures. Emojo also put comfort high on the list for the Bison Pro, outfitting it with a nice adjustable stem with on-the-fly adjustability, large sweatback handlebars, and a large comfort back seat. Pairing these cockpit choices with the ST frame, it's a great choice, especially considering the target market for trikes is riders in an older demographic or people with mobility issues. Given that target customer group, the weight and overall size should be considered. The Bison Pro is not the lightest trike, tipping our scales at 123 pounds, but given that it comes outfitted with fat tires, dual 48 volt 11.6 amp hour batteries, and really large baskets, this should come at no surprise. If you'd like something a bit lighter and don't need the folding functionality, the Emojo non-folding Caddy Pro is worth considering. Hydraulic disc brakes and a seven speed Shimano drivetrain are normal features for us to see on e-bikes, but not always a given on an e-trike. The Bison Pro features both. And not just two hydraulic disc brakes, it has three, one for each wheel. Coming down our hill test, I was able to slow this trike down from 30 plus miles an hour with very little effort. The disc brakes also have a parking brake on the right-hand lever, which makes for easier getting on and off. Now to get this trike moving again, the Bafang 750 watt motor does that with relative ease. Peaking somewhere close to 1,000 watts, this front motor dual battery bike has no problem propelling me, a 225 pound rider, to speeds that, to be honest, made me a touch uncomfortable being that it is a trike. The Bison Pro ships with a controller that limits the overall power output, which is similar to what we've seen from other brands, but unlike those other brands, Emojo has an option that if you contact them after purchase, you can swap out for a modified controller that does not have those limits in place. This will allow you to reach the higher speeds just like I did. Trikes do have a unique handling feel, so I recommend getting accustomed to riding a trike prior to upgrading the controller, or in the very least, ride with a bit of caution the first time you're out. Given the current trike market and some of the ultra affordable options that have come to the market, the Bison Pro is in need of a few upgrades to keep pace in front of those other models. 
Let's start with the front fork. While it did work, it does not offer any adjustability or a lockout, which is typically a giveaway of it being a very entry level fork. And for $3,000, we'd expect something a bit more robust. Next, the folding mechanism. The Bison Pro does fold, but not really into any more of a convenient package. Even just a folding stem could give you a bit more room to work with. Then there's the optional controller. This trike out of the box, I am certain in places like Florida would have no issues. But on our longer, more gradual hills here in Wisconsin, it was mm, lacking. The more powerful controller is currently offered only as an after purchase option. So keep that in mind if you're not comfortable installing a controller on your trike. On the subject of electronics and mechanics, the assembly of the Emojo Bison Pro can be a bit daunting if you're not mechanically inclined. I know there's a $200 extra charge for a professional assembly, but I almost feel like this should come included on all trikes. Some other small things to help level up the Emojo trike would be to include dual chargers and a single key for both batteries. These two things alone would help the Bison Pro feel just a bit more premium. Regardless of our minor gripes, the Emojo trike is a great option for someone looking for a bit more powerful than an electric trike that is also a bit more capable given that it has knobbier tires and a suspension front fork. If we did help you decide on the Emojo Bison Pro, please consider using our links in the description. All purchases made after clicking any of those links help support us here at eBike Escape. So what do you think about the Bison Pro? Should we review another e-trike? Let us know in the comments down below. Thanks everyone for watching. And as always, remember to ride safely and I'll catch you all in the next one.